This is the 2023 Ford Escape. It's a mid-cycle refresh of Ford's very popular compact crossover. In this video, we're gonna check out all the features, take it for a drive, and then test the all-wheel drive on our off-road course. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. All new back in 2020, this 2023 Ford Escape brings subtle but significant improvements to both the exterior and the interior. In terms of looks, I really like this design. I like the headlight treatment. It's very similar to what you would see in the Mach-E. Also, this little strip of lighting is pretty cool. It gives it real character at night. But most of all, I really, really like this grill. It just looks so cool. It's like little shark scales or something. I don't know, it's gonna be a hassle to clean, but it looks great right now. This new look leans hard into the hatchback aesthetic while still maintaining some crossover capability thanks to eight inches of ground clearance and a spacious trunk. The model we're testing today is a Platinum with all-wheel drive. Price as you see it here, 41,965 US dollars, including destination, panorama sunroof, and a premium tech package. We're gonna check out all the features and then we're gonna take it for a drive and then we're gonna bring it back here to our Peninsula off-road course and take it through Chicken Run to see if this all-wheel drive system can save you if you go down a road that you didn't intend. <laughs> Remember back in the 90s when we would have killed to have over 200 horsepower? Here it's in a small crossover, but this is really, I think, a hot hatch in disguise. Under the hood is a revised 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder EcoBoost engine. This produces the same 250 horsepower and 280 torques as the outgoing model. The transmission is an 8-speed automatic. Economy is rated at 23 MPGs in the city and 31 on the highway. In the back, the Escape boasts up to 65.4 cubic feet of cargo capacity with the second row down. Put the second row back into position and you get 37.5 cubic feet. Back here you also get a spare tire, remember those? Yes, it is a partial spare, but you know, it'll do. This Platinum trim also gets a 12 volt power socket back here. Oh, and lighting. Let's try this on for size. You know, not bad. I got plenty of room for my legs. This seat is pretty far back, actually. This is further back than I would be seated if I were driving over there. A little hand grip, I got a little light there. Yeah, this is pretty good. Now, in the middle here, I get vents. Very nice to see in a compact vehicle, as well as both USB-C and USB-A power sockets. Then over here, I get a fold-down armrest. Okay, and this sunroof. It is a large panorama and it just lets in a lot of light. Love it. Now let's check a look up front. At this platinum trim we have a really cool feature that's kind of a Ford thing. Uh, we have this little numeric pad in the door. This allows me to set a code and lock my keys in the car. That is excellent if you're a runner, jogger, or a hiker, and you just don't want to carry that stuff with you. It can be safely locked inside the vehicle, and you don't have to take anything with you. Right, the front seat. Let's power it up. Oh, I like that display. That looks really nice. Oh, they have the pop-up heads-up display, which... Mazda used to use this and I was never fond of it. Over time, it just kind of gets dusty. And even though, yeah, it's probably not gonna break, it just seems like one of those things that will. And it kind of just bugs me. I just don't think it's necessary. I would rather just have no heads up display at all. Unfortunately, it is bundled with the package that gives me all sorts of other good things on this vehicle, such as the B&O sound system, the leather seating. I guess Auto Park is part of that, but again, I don't use that. I do like this digital gauge cluster. It looks really cool. I have to say Ford is just killing it with their graphic design. The gauge cluster here is kind of a 
3D relief effect. It, it's really nice looking, and I can toggle through all sorts of valuable pieces of info. Tire pressure, ooh, individual tire pressures, I like that. So many vehicles these days, instead of using TPMS, they use the brake system to determine whether or not there's a flat, so you can't see exact PSI. I love that I can see that there. On the steering wheel here, as I was toggling, I also noticed that this does have lane detection and adaptive cruise control. It does not have Ford's most advanced system called Blue Cruise, which is a hands-free system. Uh, those you have to move up to different vehicles uh, to get that option or to pay more for that option. I do get a very comfortable seat, lots of power adjustments, power lumbar. I even get memory in three positions. Now over here, we of course have the heart of Sync 4, which is a cloud connected system. And there is so much here. I'm not really gonna go over all of it, uh, but let's just say it has a home screen with all of the little pieces of information at a quick glance and touch. Toyota, you can take note on that. For example, let's jump into settings. And here I can deal with my Series XM settings, sync navigation, general setup as well, if I wanna change my units, if I wanna to go to like metric or something like that. Uh, and I can also set up my hotspot. Going back here, go to car features, and now we're into drive modes. So you do get a physical button, but you don't even toggle with it, it just brings up the screen. So I guess ultimately you are still using the screen, at least they give you a hard button shortcut. So there's that. These are exactly what they sound like. They modify both the power output as well as the traction control systems for best response in those conditions. Let's move on back. In that same screen, in features, we also have driver assistance, and this thing is loaded. In addition to the adaptive cruise control, it also has speed limit assist, lane keep assist, blind spot information, cross traffic alerts, rear brake assist, and a driver alert to let you know if you're getting a little wavy. Of course, it does support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it does so wirelessly. Let's go ahead and add a phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so I'm going to go to Bluetooth, I'm going to scroll to the bottom, it says Ford Escape. Confirm that the pin displayed on yes, the that's matches the pin. the pin displayed on your device. Allow. Close. Pairing successful. Toyota Use CarPlay. Safety. Please stay alert Finish. to change in road conditions and use yes. things or activated features while your vehicle is in motion. It's fast, but way too many questions. Uh, but this is not a problem just for Ford. I think it has to do with both with like Bluetooth requirements as well as what Apple requires. It's just a lot of confirmation. It's kind of annoying. But once we're done, boom, we have wireless Apple CarPlay. And of course I can charge my device on the pad right down here. Very handy. And I like the fact that I can still see the device. I don't have to like hide it in a cubby just to get it charging. Um, that's important for if your charging stops, you can kind of see that right there. Or if your device overheats because of a sunbeam directly on it, Again, you can see it right there. That's kind of nice. And CarPlay works great, looks great. And I even have a second auxiliary screen here. So I have quick access to all of my built-in features as well. And I hate to see it, it is here, uh, but we do get touchscreen controls for the climate. That said, they are on all the time and they don't take up much of the display. So if you're gonna put it on the screen, this is a nice way to do it. I have heated seats at this trim level. I also have a heated steering wheel. I have fan control, all that stuff. And it is dual climate control, uh, one for each side. They can control theirs on the screen right there. What else do we have here? Uh, apps, of course there are apps. This is also where you set up your Apple CarPlay and then you can also add sync apps as well. If you're curious, yes, of course, it is federally mandated. So this does function as a rear view camera when you're in reverse, but even more so, it is a surround view camera and a pretty good one at that. I'm actually uh, pretty pleased with this setup here. And you can, of course, modify it to look at very specific angles if you want to do that. Okay, so am I done yet? No, you also get a hard button shortcut to driver assistance where you can turn off traction control. You also get a parking assist where it'll auto park for you. I hate those systems. I had one bad experience with it five years ago, never used them since. Uh, personally, even when I have seen them used, they're so much slower than just knowing how to park. Please, please just learn how to park. Don't rely on these systems. Right, what else do we got? Panorama sunroof, we have a visor with, ooh, light, that's nice. 
Uh, does it extend? Yep. Oh, and it has home uh, garage stuff right there. It's got the three buttons. So that's nice. I also get an eyeglass holder just like on my Ranger. And we get lights there. Cool. Okay. Well, uh, I think it's time to take this for a drive. We're going to hit the roads around the peninsula here, and then we're going to hit our peninsula off-road course to see how good this all-wheel drive system is. Blush, I really like this infotainment system. The newest sync, it has a lot of great features. It's very easy to use. However, and this is a big however, I'm not liking the climate controls down here. And the reason is the way they work. Let's just say I want to turn my fan up. I hit fan, oop, missed it, fan. It animates the menu, which is annoying. I just want it on. I don't need to see it animated. Uh, and then when I hit a button here let's say I want to go down well I need to like hit the spot which is kind of tough to do and at this point the menu hangs out and it hangs out for several seconds there's no way to clear it early so for example here I'm clicking I pull it up I want to do that and I want to clear it nope it doesn't clear it like nothing clears the menu if I tap the fan it turns it off uh, toggles apparently between I don't know a bunch of stuff so uh, it's it's the usability just isn't there with this menu now if they made it so I could clear the menus if they got rid of those animations because I don't want to waste two seconds waiting for an animation to come up and animation to go down this is about usability not about being pretty and I think it fails on that score also let's say I want to um, do my seat warmers well it's not very I uh, missed it again. So I toggle it, apparently it goes on all the way, and then this toggles it down, I guess. But again, menu stays on until it animates away. Now if I'm currently navigating and I need to see my navigation, but I'm also like, the fan is too loud or whatever reason, and I need to hit that button, uh, it will cover up my navigation, of course. Uh, this one will also do the same. Well, let's turn auto down there. Yeah, that one right there. Oh, I want to change my zone. Oh, now it's going to take up the entire screen for some reason. Not really necessary. I feel like this could be refined a little bit more. Not ideal. And for those of you saying, well, you're just being petty. Uh, no, stuff like this is actually really important. This is the stuff that you engage with every single day when you're driving your car. And so at this point, I'm now trying to clear this menu. There's no clear way to do it. Uh, you just have to wait for it to go away, which is frustrating. And I know it sounds like a broken record, but if we don't tell the car makers that this is not okay, they're not gonna know. Car makers do watch our videos, so I think it's important to tell them, hey Ford, give me some physical buttons. This virtual needs to either be refined or done away with. Now in terms of driving this car, yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, I am in sport mode right now, which is the most aggressive, and power comes on very quick, and the handling is fantastic. It really drives like a hot hatch. And that also means that, yes, the suspension is on the firm side, so it's not gonna be really ideal for rough roads or for off-road conditions. However, on paved roads, which is, let's be honest, where most vehicles are gonna live, this little escape with this two liter turbocharged engine is just fun to drive. <sighs> yeah, let's feel the suspension there. It's really not too bad, but you can feel that it is stiff. You have really good turn in, add a little throttle and you can feel a little rotation in the vehicle. The all wheel drive system in this vehicle does help with handling and it is just such a nice setup. I really like this vehicle. And I'm not sure if it's as much fun in the lower trims. I haven't driven one with uh, one of the lower motors, so I can't say if this kind of fun translates into the lower output versions. But with the two liter turbo, yeah, this thing is really fun to drive. Power on. Love it. You know, there's no real torque steer, which you really wouldn't hope to have any of that with an all wheel drive vehicle. 
power comes on pretty quick. Uh, yeah, it's a small engine with you know, a decent sized turbo, so you get most of that punch a little bit higher up in the RPM, probably around 4,000, 4,500, um, but that's okay. You know, that's kind of what you expect in this type of vehicle. And I'm noticing something with all modern Ford vehicles, the brakes are super touchy. Like I put a little brake on and it's like, gh, gh. every time I get a new Ford, I always have to like adjust my braking because they are very touchy and they, they grab really quickly with just a very little bit of pressure. So if you move from another vehicle into the Ford, the first few stops are gonna be, eh, sorry to the passenger, eh. <laughs> but you might also have to apologize to the passenger for blasting through the corners at twice the rated speed uh, because yeah, you, I feel like you could do that in this vehicle and it is fun, which is actually kind of surprising considering this has eight inches of ground clearance, but it doesn't drive like it does. It drives exactly like a hot hatch. So if you were concerned about the Focus hatch going away, uh, no, it's right here. They just call it an escape now. So I've already gone on and on about the climate controls, but the rest of the tech in this vehicle, I actually really like. The wireless Apple CarPlay, it works great. I've had no issues with it. The charging pad is right down there where I can see the phone. I'm less likely to forget my phone if it's not hidden. The gauge cluster, super easy to read. I can toggle through all sorts of info. It doesn't feel like an inexpensive vehicle with just options added on top of it. Uh, which it's kind of surprising, you know? This thing is not cheap. You're looking at over 40 grand for this, but you get quite a lot for that money. Seat heaters, steering warmer, you have the digital displays, and a very powerful engine with a good all-wheel drive system. Now we're gonna test the all-wheel drive system in an easy off-road situation a little bit later in this video. But right now, I just wanna kind of feel how this car drives. So let's try a zero to 60. I am in sport mode and I'm just going to mosh the throttle. Let's see what it does. Three, two, one, go. Power comes on. Oh, there it hits around 4,000 RPM, 40, 50 and 60. Looking at 6.75 seconds, which I think is pretty good for this class. Visibility pretty good. That C pillar is a little bit on the chubby side, but considering this has the surround view camera system, that's never really going to be a problem, I don't think. Also, we have the blind spot warning to help with lane changes. Now, this does have adaptive cruise control. I don't really have any traffic here to play with the adaptive portion, but let's go ahead and turn it on. I can set my gap and let's see how good this lane detection is. Now, this is a painted highway. Um, it has, you know, stripe on the outside, stripe on the inside, and let's see how well it tracks around this corner coming up. Yep, that's what's telling me to put my hands on the wheel. Yep, that's pretty good. It's tracking true and straight down the middle. There's no ping-ponging, very easy to use. If you do want something more advanced, you can't get it in this vehicle, I don't think. Uh, but Blue Cruise is available on other Ford vehicles, and that is, of course, the actual hands-off um, autopilot system, uh, which is really cool. I've used it before. It works great. It does rely on geofenced highways, though. So like this highway here, I'd have to rely on the lane detection. Uh, but if I'm getting onto a major freeway or even a major highway, then I can actually do hands-off driving, which is really nice for long distances. So changing drive modes is very easy. There is a button down here, which can give me a shortcut to the screen. Uh, everything is animated and that does slow down the menu transitions. A little annoying, uh, but then I click up here and we're good to go. So I do have to click that to exit. Now we're in normal mode and throttle is a little bit slower to engage. That's basically about it. I mean, the, the drive modes on vehicles like this, when you, you don't have adaptive suspension, uh, you don't have height adjustable suspension, you don't have an electric powertrain and you can up the wattage, you know, it's just, you're not gonna see a massive difference between the different drive modes, but it does feel peppier in sport and it does feel more natural in normal. And yes, 
You can even switch it down to the slippery mode if you want the best traction in slippery conditions. It'll cut power a little bit. It'll also be more aggressive at shifting power uh, with the all-wheel drive system. Now, this all-wheel drive system is, of course, a primarily front-wheel drive, and it uses a clutch to push power to the back. And it does so when it thinks it's needed, and it is a predictive system. There is a little power window up here I can use for power distribution, and this shows me how power is getting pushed around. So right now I'm in slippery, and it's showing that power is going to the front and rear pretty equally with a bias to the front just slightly. If I switch to the next mode, let's go to normal. At this point, because I am driving at 45 miles per hour, it disengages those rear wheels for best economy. Uh, so it's basically effectively a front wheel drive vehicle. Then I can go to sport and again, it now brings more power to the back. So it does adjust the all wheel drive system depending on the drive mode you're in. So where some vehicles, I might say, well, the drive modes are kind of pointless. This one, it is actually doing something pretty fundamental to the way that this vehicle handles. You're not gonna get that positive turn in in normal mode because it is effectively a front wheel drive vehicle. Whereas with sport, it'll push power to the back, which helps you with rotation as you're throttling through the corners very important thing to note. And I think that's actually one of the best things about this Escape. It's not just an all-wheel drive system. It's an all-wheel drive system that can be modified depending on what kind of driving you intend to do. And that's pretty cool. So I really like the way this vehicle drives on pavement, but now it's time to do the real test. We're gonna see how well this does on our Peninsula off-road course. This is a short course that is designed specifically to test power distribution on small crossovers like this one. And uh, we call it Chicken Run because it goes right next to my chicken coop. So you might see a chicken or two, or not, I don't know. It's midday, so some of them might not wanna be out in the weather. Let's go ahead and line this up and see how it does. Here we are at the Driving Sports Peninsula Off-Road Test Course, otherwise known as my backyard. This is Chicken Run. This is a very simple side-to-side -side power distribution test that will be ideal for this type of crossover. I do have to worry about ground clearance. Even though this has eight inches of ground clearance, it's a very flat bottom, which can potentially be problematic if we're going over humps, which is what we are gonna be doing today. So I'm gonna be listening for any scratching. I don't wanna damage the underside. Now this is, of course, just a traditional two liter turbocharged gas motor. There's no batteries that we have to worry about. There's nothing special in regards to that. Also, there's no special off-road modes. This really isn't designed for off-road, uh, but I think this will really give us an indication as to the capability of this all-wheel drive system in this application. And I wanna show you the difference here in how power works. We're gonna start in normal, and then when necessary, we'll switch to slippery if it has trouble shifting power around. Now I'm gonna listen here for any rubbing. Oop, a little rubbing on the side there. Climb up here. Now I have taken a number of crossovers through this. Um, oh yeah, forgot, surround view camera system, really neat. Gonna climb up here. This is where I'm listening for any grinding. We should start lifting the front driver's side wheel before we go down too low on the right, which should avoid grinding. Oop, little grinding, but now we're lifting. Okay, and at this point you can see that we have both the passenger front and driver rear lifted completely off the ground. This means that it's reliant on the other two wheels to shift power. I'm just adding a very small amount of throttle and you can hear the vibration. That's the brake system trying to shift power around. It is starting to get us over. But now I wanna switch it to slippery so you can see what the difference is here before we get all the way out. I'm gonna roll back just a little bit. Now with slippery, it's gonna mute the throttle and it's also gonna be more aggressive in that power shift. So here I go, add a little throttle. Actually, I have to add a lot more throttle because that throttle is so muted. And it gets us up and over even quicker because it's more aggressive on that power shift. I'll make sure I don't slam down because I don't wanna grind. Oop, there's a little grinding. But yeah, all in all, this system is actually really good. It got us through that. Yeah, there was a little fanfare, but 
you know, it's a grip issue. <laughs> it's also, this is not really designed for aggressive off-roading. If you want that, go get the Bronco Sport. It has goat modes in the upper trim levels, which will get you through stuff like that, like slicing a hot knife through butter. But this one does have the capability if and when you need it. So overall, I think I'm pretty happy with this vehicle. I like the way it looks. I like the way it performs. It handles fantastic. For anybody complaining that you cannot buy a hot hatch these days, this is it. It's called the Escape, and it is really fun to drive. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share my videos. Hope you enjoy them. I really enjoy making them. We'll see you again right here real soon.